I'm Royal, I'm rank 1 in Wild Rift, and in this Wild Rift macro guide, I will show you how to get Dragon and Herald every single game. In Wild Rift, it is very important to get the objectives. Dragon gives your team stacking buffs that make you tankier, give you more damage, and sustain. Herald gives you a bunch of gold and a great tool to siege towers. So here's what you need to do to secure these objectives for your team. This isn't just gonna be a jungle guide, I will be going over what you need to do to secure these objectives from the perspective of every role. Okay, let's understand when do these objectives spawn. The first dragon and first herald spawn at 5 minutes, the second herald spawns 4 minutes after you slay it, while dragons spawn every 5 minutes after they're slain. This means that when the objectives first spawn, you want to figure out which one you want to get because they spawn at the same time. There are two scenarios that play out at this point. Either teams handshake and trade the objective, or they group and battle to the death for one of them. Usually, teams tend to go for dragon and have a huge team fight and lose or win the game just off that. But I'm here to tell you, there's a better way. You need to look at your team comp and decide if your team fight at this point in the game will be stronger than the enemies. If the enemies are ahead, or if they have stronger early game champions, you don't need to fight the dragon. You can go for the herald. Herald gives you 150 gold for taking it down and the eye of the herald. Ideally, you want to use the eye to get the first tower. To do that, go to a tower that's already lost the first two platings that are the easiest to get and then use the herald to take the rest of the platings out that are a lot tankier. Let's break down the math, okay? You get 150 gold for taking herald, 300 gold for the last two plates, 175 gold for the turret and 75 gold to you and all your teammates which equals 375 gold overall so herald gives your team 1000 gold which at this point in the game is massive your objective now is to use that 1000 gold to snowball the game enough so that you're stronger for the second dragon also when you're taking the herald please be careful dodge its auto attacks and hit it from behind to proc the eye and take it down efficiently and quickly let's look at an in-game example here's how darkbreaker the famous youtuber and streamer and challenger player uses herald in this clip this is exactly how you want to do it so his dual lane is trolling by contesting dragon in a fight that they're never gonna win but he makes the right play he goes for the herald quickly kills it and then uses it on the solo lane turret to pick up 1k gold for his team let's quickly look at a comparison between first herald and first dragon with first herald if you play it right you get 1k gold for first dragon, you get 100 gold for slaying the dragon, and then either 2% missing health through gen every 5 seconds, 3 flat and 2% armor and magic resist, or 3% AD and AP. At this point in the game, the 1000 gold is gonna be way more valuable, and of course, the map control you get from destroying the first turret. So don't get baited by going for the first dragon every single game. A lot of the time, Herald is actually better. Like I mentioned before, your goal is to use that 1k gold advantage that you got to secure the next herald and to secure the next dragon and the third dragon after that. The most important part of trading objectives is having good vision on both of the objectives as they spawn. This way you know which ones the opponents are going for and you can go for the other one and not have to fight them. So before the 5 minute mark, make sure you're placing vision around the objectives and ping your team to do the same. Now that we learned how to properly trade objectives, let's move on to the most important part of the video, how to contest the objectives. The most important part of contesting the objective is getting control of the area. The goal of controlling the area is to give us an advantageous position for the fight around the objectives. An advantageous position is when you're near the objective on the river and the enemies have no vision of you. Now the only way that the enemy can contest the objective is by walking in blindly which allows you to ambush them and win the fight. To get this position what you need to do is get lane priority. Lane priority is when you push out the wave and the enemies need to go clear that wave so that gives you priority to move first to the objectives. So right before the objective spawns you want to do this 3 step process to secure the objectives and this applies to every role. First, push out the lanes, especially mid lane because it is the shortest and the minions will arrive there first. While the enemies are farming the minions, go to the objective area and sweep the area and destroy any wards to deny vision. Additionally, place your own control wards. You should do these two steps before the objective spawns. And for the third step, start the objective, but be ready to engage when the enemies blindly walk into you. Now that the objective has spawned, you need to be ready to turn on the enemy team as they come in to contest it and collapse on the first target, effectively making the fight a 4v5. 
This way, you will guarantee that you will get the best fight possible. Lastly, make sure that you know your role when taking the objective. As a jungler, you should be on it and ready to smite at all times. If you're playing the consistent DPS character, in most cases the AD carry, make sure you're hitting the objective and DPSing it down. The other members, and especially the support, should be looking to engage the fight or zone out the enemy jungler to avoid objective steals. Let's take a look at a WRL game between JDG Gaming and Thundertalk Gaming. JDG has the advantage, so they start by pushing out mid lane. Then they can rotate together and go for the Herald. They're starting off the Herald and TT has to do something. They can either give up the Herald completely or they have to walk in blindly and contest since JDG has already cleared off all the vision and have control of the area. TT choose to walk in, split completely with Aatrox being top, not getting a good engage with the Alistar and they just get kited back and they lose the fight. And the Herald, giving enough gold to JDG to win the game. This three step process can also apply to Baron, however taking it is a little more tricky. If you guys want a macro guide for Baron and how to use the Baron buff, comment below. Like this video if you enjoyed and want more and subscribe for more Wild Rift content.